Well, first of all, congratulations on this wonderful co collection, also this very important collection. So first of all, Christian, how did this start? How did it come about? What it came, you know, now it's like slightly more than a year ago. Uh, it came from a, from a bad story that everybody's been hearing about, everybody's been knowing about, which is some death, uh, including one, George Floyd. And um, so after that, you know, the turmoil that it went through, and that turmoil arrived at the moment where there was a COVID and the COVID sort of, you know, the, the lockdown of the COVID. So I think that most people, and I would include me definitely, were very affected by the death of George Floyd and also affected in, in your day life because you were locked and feeling so much injustice and not even being to, to be able to, you could only shout and feel terrible, but you could not walk, you know, you could not do something, you could not extract yourself from your, not comfort zone, because there was no comfort zone at this point, but from your zone, from your apartment, from your house, whatever. Uh, I think that the mix of all of this um, made what happens. I was looking at Idris, completely by accident, at uh, Idris, Instagram, and Sabrina, and they were um, talking to about Dometi. So I listened to that. I listened to their conversation, the three of them, to all the questions that I wish, you know, I, I wish there was even more, but it was two hours, two hours and a half or something like that. And so listening to them, I felt really in a lot of empathy but also really proud of counting Sabrina and Idris as friends. And so the day after I called, I called Idris and um, we started to speak. And I say, you know, I think that, I think we should do something. Sabrina and Idris, what does this collection mean to you? Oh, I mean, it means so much. And I think Christian touched on two really important things. He touched on empathy, which is a really big theme for us in this collection. You know, walk a mile in my shoes isn't about walking a mile in mine or Idris's shoes or in Christian's shoes. It's about unlocking your own empathy and looking at the person next to you who might be going through something different, who might be a victim of systematic injustice, who might be, you know, fighting a race struggle that you, you might yourself may not be a part of. Um, but also about keeping the conversation going. I mean, when we started this conversation, uh, as Christian said, George Floyd had just been murdered and, you know, we're releasing this a year later and we're still seeing victims of, of these injustices. Um, so it's really important to have a conversation that continues and for people to reflect them on themselves about how they can contribute and what they can do to uh, be innovative in ways to support this cause. This collection for me means, you know, that there are various ways to, to contribute. Um, we, we're talking about, you know, a luxury item, but we're talking about the intention. You know, we're talking about that, uh, that there are ways that we can be innovative in the way we contribute to a, to, to a conversation, to a movement. Um, and we, we, we certainly you know, believe that, you know, the way that we've done this benefits people in a way that <clears throat> we couldn't do ourselves. We all know that when there is a new cycle, everybody's in, in and it's on the news and everybody feels like, you know, they want to do something, but then it will die down. Um, we're hoping that when people put a value into their contribution, that conversation can continue um, and people realize that, there are different ways to be able to to act. Sabrina, as an activist and philanthropist, are, are you disappointed that actually we talked about racial injustice a lot in 2020 and we talk about it less? Will it lead to meaningful change? And do collections like this, again, you know, put the spotlight back on the important stuff to make people act? You know, I think that's interesting because I'm, you know, I'm 33 years old uh, as of... Uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, and actually when we released the collection, it was my birthday, but I've been a black woman my whole life and haven't seen this conversation at the forefront. So I think to someone who looks like me, I'm not surprised that the conversation 
hasn't continued with the same force and and power that it did last year so it's it's you know a little bit expected but i think what people are starting to see now is the power of coming together for a cause i mean this was a global outcry this wasn't just an american problem and people realized that very quickly when you saw protests spring up from south africa to you know uk to america so i think what people are realizing now is that there is an urgency that needs to be had around this conversation because the world is fed up, you know, everyone is fed up. So, um, you know, thank you for asking that question, but I think it's a pain that's far too familiar. Christian, can chief executives and luxury companies now afford to actually not have a point of view on things like racial inequality and racial injustice? You know, everybody, I would say everybody is different and I don't want to speak about other people. You know, my name is associated to a company, but first of all, I'm a human being. And uh, so I would not consider myself as a company, even if I am a company. I mean, if I have a company which, bear, which bears my name, first of all, there is, uh, there is one person. And so it's one person who decided with the help of his company to move on for something which is important. And uh, it's not a company. It's not a company move. It's a one person move. And the company definitely followed and the company, my company uh, was so happy that, um, that we took action for something which is valuable. For me, it's difficult to speak about other companies because you know, first of all, people do whatever they want and uh, I'm not there to judge anything, any move of people, of companies which are different. And, and I'm not even interested. It's really, uh, a, it's, a, it's, it's a human, it, it's a human being who is first there, not a company. But I think that as a human being, I felt responsible. But hopefully, Sabrina, this also leads, and Idris, you know, this leads to meaningful change, because without meaningful change, then it's difficult to actually make a difference. I don't know how you see meaningful change. Like, how do you define meaningful change? Yeah, I think, you know, for us, it's been through conversation with friends and seeing people understand and, and engaging people in conversations they might not have been engaged with. And we see steps towards justice and steps... Uh, you know, I mean, we're we're speaking. What is it? Only a couple of days now after uh, the verdict for Derek Chauvin, and I I wouldn't say that that was necessarily justice because justice would have been George still being alive today. But there's progress and there's steps in the right direction. See these conversations as part of solutions. You know, these conversations as part of forum of you know, we are going to find a solution for the problems that we've seen before. That's meaningful change, you know. In our way, this these are the, this conversation, you know, benefits uh, others by solution. You know, yeah. the, the five charities that we have chosen to work with uh, and, and, can, and be the beneficiaries of this movement are now going to be able to ch challenge, the, you know, use solution-based um, help.